Hello, it's Mr. Spracklin here. Welcome to the Inspire to Learn Virtual School Video Archive. This is where we keep all the footage from Virtual School from the last few months. And from Monday the 25th of May through to Wednesday the 3rd of June, we're going to be replaying you some of our favourite whole school assemblies. And today, we've got a real treat for you. Hello everyone, it's 20 past 11 on Tuesday the 21st of April 2020. We are back for assembly time, it's whole school assembly. Uh, we hope you've had a great morning so far in our virtual school. Uh, Mr Spratton's had a particularly uh, productive morning because he's refound his greatest showman, Top Hat. So I'm particularly happy this morning. Uh, we've, be, we've been tidying upstairs. Um, which is a bit like going caving, really, um, looking for all sorts of treasures in our mezzanine area. And uh, we came across my top hat, so uh, I'm going to be wearing that for the rest of the day, I think. Um, it's one of Mr. Spratton's favourite fancy dress items. Um, it's wonderful to see lots of people here. If you're here this morning, joining in with our whole school assembly, do make sure you say hello, just like Imogen has. Hello, Imogen. Thank you very much. It's great to see you. And um, we've got another surprise mystery guest waiting for us this morning. Uh, the Mellors are in the house. Fantastic. Hello, Mellor family. Wonderful to see you joining us this morning for Whole School Assembly, where we have a very special treat in store. Uh, good morning to Alcee and Henry who are joining us. Thank you very much. Uh, always wonderful to see you all here. Right, without further ado, I'll introduce our mystery guest. Oh, Hugo and Harlan are also saying hello. Uh, our mystery guest this morning is someone that we're all very familiar with, um, but she's here to share a very special skill that she has, and that's Miss Johnson. Good morning, Miss Johnson. Hello, everyone. Nice to see you. How are we this morning? Okay, I've got my little studio set up here, so hopefully we're going to have some this morning. And on, uh, from the view that we can see of you at the moment, there looks like there's something floating above you. Up here, yeah. Yeah, what's this? Well, this is my phone because this is going to be taking some pictures and videos of what I've got here in front of me, which is a nice big piece of paper. So let's see if I can put that on the screen so that we get to see that, shall we? Oh, that's not the view we want. Let's try. There we go. Oh, it's all gone wrong. <laughs> No, that's good. I, I have to take myself off the screen, but you there. carry on. Trying to be really high tech. It seems to be working. But anyway, I'm going to start. Um, uh, I'm really pleased to be here today. It's nice to see you all. Well, see you virtually anyway, because uh, um, it seems like ages. I haven't seen you for ages and ages. Now, one of the things that I used to to really enjoy doing a long time ago before I got really being a busy teacher was drawing and I think in the last few um weeks having a little, little bit of extra time and I could go back and rediscover some of the things that I was doing oh hello that's a nice noise So, 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 that was. We can try again, Miss Johnson. I think I've sorted it now. So, I'm going to put it up here. One of the things that I really enjoy doing is I love drawing. Um, I love drawing because it's one of those mindful activities that you can do um, to take your mind off the busy world and the things that go on around. And one of the most important things about drawing is there's really two types of drawing. There's drawing from your imagination, and there's also drawing from life. And um, I like doing both of those. I've never been really good at drawing from my imagination, but I've been much better at drawing from, from life um, and copying things. So I thought we'd have a little class together today. So what I'd like you to do is go and get some pencils and paper and things like that um, and you come back and you can join in with a little drawing exercise that I thought we could do together. So what so I'm going to carry on talking while you do is can get they go and get a pencil and I'll just show you a few skills that you can do and then she's going to do, so do some skills. I've got here one of the most important things. Hello. Johnson, why 
what I'm going to ask you to do is if you could turn your sound up on your phone and off on your laptop. I'm getting a better feed from your phone's microphone. So I'm going to swap okay. around, basically. If you turn the sound, sound off, off on your laptop. phone book, and um, we'll turn it on. Sound on. going on phone, I think. And I think that's much better, Miss Johnson. Is that okay? That's, that's is really good. Is it working good. now? Oh, good, yeah. good. Anyway, so what I'm looking for is we're going to have a go at drawing some shapes today because drawing shapes is really, really important when you want to draw anything. So as long as you can draw shapes, you can draw practically anything. Now, a couple of years ago, I think year four might remember this. If anyone's tuned in from year four, we had an author. Actually, she's an illustrator author called Lucy Volpin come into school. And um, one of the things that she loved to draw was dinosaurs so we are going to have a go at drawing some dinosaurs later on just by using shapes okay and then if i have time at the end i've got some of my artwork i thought you might like to see from way back in the time when i had time to do lots of artwork and a little bit you might be able to have a sneak peek of something i'm doing now as well um just because i've got a little bit of time that i don't normally have so we're going to have a go at drawing some shapes and some dinosaurs first thing um, you can use anything to draw with, doesn't matter, felt tip, biro, pencil, whatever you feel comfortable with. And the first thing that I like to do to get my eye in is just draw lots and lots of circles. So I've been doing a bit of a doodle here, like in our mindfulness um, slides at school. I've just been drawing lots and lots of circles just to get my pencil working on the page. And they can be small circles and big circles. You can doodle however many you like and it builds up this wonderful pattern that you can color in later if you want to and that looks really really effective looks like pebbles on a beach doesn't it so you can have a go at doing that okay that's really cool circle circular shapes but of course there's other shapes you can draw and practice drawing as well um i've got some circles here but also, you can practice drawing triangles or squares or rectangles and drawing them different ways around as well. Not just the normal way, but try drawing them upside down and the right way around so that you can use those for your dinosaur. I wonder if you can guess which bit of your dinosaur you might be using the triangles for and the squares. Have a little look at that. Um, so. Let's have a go on this big piece of paper and see how we get on. Hopefully you've all got your pencil and paper now so you can have a go. The first thing we need for our dinosaur is a body. Now, I'm going to draw it in pencil because I'm going to rub some of these bits out later. So you might want to use a pencil for this first bit as well. And I'm going to draw quite a big oval shape in the middle of my page. And that oval shape, I don't know if you can see it, I'll draw it a bit harder. That oval shape is going to be the dinosaur's body. And as I say, Lucy Volpin, who came in to see us a couple of years ago, she taught me this method. And I get really inspired by other artists as well. So that's the dinosaur body. Make it nice and big and fat. Um, now we need a head. So I'm going to leave a little gap between the body and the head. And then I'm going to draw a nice oval shape up here for the head. OK, it can be at any angle you like. It doesn't matter because your dinosaur can be looking in any direction that you want. Now, what about a neck? We need to join his head to his body. So I'm going to put in a curved line to the back of his body and another one from it, the front down to the front of his body. And that's going to be his neck. OK, now what else does a dinosaur have? A tail. So tail is a bit like a big triangle. Remember we were drawing those triangles? So I'm going to draw a triangle at the back. And I'm going to curve it a little bit. So it's going to be a bit of a curvy triangle on the back. There we go. What else does a dinosaur need? What about some feet? Okay. So feet are a bit different. So they're sort of like long oblong shapes. But I'm going to do a little corner here a little corner which is going to be like his elbow um on his front leg and I'm going to go down 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 and I think his feet are going to finish there so I'll put a nice straight line at the bottom and then I'm going to go 
up for a curve for his toes. And that's going to go all the way back up to his body like that. That's one leg. Now the other front leg I'm going to put in front of this one. So we're going to come down and down, 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 down again. We're going to put a flat line at the bottom where the other one is. And we're going to do a curve around there as well. And that's his other front leg. Now I'm going to go for some back legs. Now the back legs, we need a nice curve here so that it's like here, the front of his front of his powerful back legs, the thigh. So it's like a little C shape in his body. And then I'm going to come down. I'm going to follow that line down. And then I'm going to turn a corner like this. And I'm going to put a line for his foot and a curve for his toes again. Now, back of his leg needs to come up and follow that curve around and go up to the back of his body here. Okay? Good. Now, the other back leg. So we're going to come just a little bit further along the body. We're going to come down and we're going to draw his other back leg in here. Now, what you might like to do is put some little toenails on your dinosaur, a bit like elephant toenails, and put a bit of detail in. That's where the fun starts, where you can put the details in. So little curves, little half circles around the body, some more of those shapes there. Now, I think we need to work on his head a little bit. So I'm going to put another circle for his nose on the end. And I'll show you why that gives a better shape in a minute, because I'm going to go around the outline. In fact, I think I'll do that now. And I will use my rubber to just rub out some of the lines in between that I don't need anymore. OK, so I'm going to go around the outline now and I'm just going to join my shapes together to make his face look a bit more dinosaur like. And that's the outline that we want all the way around his body, all the way down his tail, and back up again, up to his bottom, ah, down his leg. And that's all right. We don't need to do, go over that again. Under his belly, down his leg again. There we go. Now, can you see the lines I don't need? I don't need that line there. And I don't need the lines in his face, so I'm going to get those out with the rubber. Now, who thinks my dinosaur needs some spines on his back? So after I've rubbed this out, I'm going to see if I can draw some triangles onto his back. And remember, this is all just shapes. So... When you're practicing, it doesn't matter what yours ends up looking like, OK, because it's your dinosaur and it's from your imagination. And that's the beauty of working from your imagination. It's much, much better. So there we go. All right. So should we put some spikes on him? I'm going to start at his head and I'm going to start small with the triangles that we were drawing at the start. And then as I go down his back the triangles are going to get bigger and bigger. So he's got some really big ones on his back here. There we go. We're going to go all the way down his tail and I'm going to get smaller again as I get towards the end of his tail. All the way down. There we go. He's beginning to look a bit more dinosaur-like, but I think he needs a face. So I'm going to give him some nice eyes and eyebrows. He's a bit of a cartoony dinosaur, isn't he? And uh, give him some nostrils. Maybe colour those in a bit black. And then put a nice big smile on his face there. Now, I think he needs some markings. So... Dinosaurs had all kinds of different markings, but I'm going to use these sort of square shapes all the way down his back. And just like the spikes, as I get further down his back, the squares are going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and then smaller as they go down his tail and they might eventually disappear. So they're not there anymore. And I might put another layer in. And all of this, after you've finished and drawing your shapes, you can colour in. And that's the fun part, because you can make your dinosaur any colour you like, 
because it's from your imagination. It doesn't have to be realistic. And anyway, who knows what color the dinosaurs were? There we go. So a dinosaur. Now I might just with a Sharpie pen, if I can find it. I think I might have dropped that one on the floor earlier on. So let's try this one instead. I'm just gonna go over my black outlines and that will just make him stand out even more. I don't know what type of dinosaur he is. What do you reckon? There we go. Round his toenails, those half circles. Wonder how you're getting on at home with this. You'll have to let Mr. Spracklin know if you've had a go, maybe take a picture of what you've done. So I started drawing when I was your age and I just used to trace things. I used to copy things. I used to doodle, all those kinds of things. Um, I always used to get paper and pencils for birthday presents and things like that. So I was always encouraged to um, draw. And it's something that I just find really relaxing. So it's nice at the moment to find things that you can do that take your mind off things and you can just get absorbed in, get into the zone. It's really good fun. So I'll finish off with his um, shapes. And then if you've got any questions. So, yeah, how long have you drawn for which you answered? Uh, we've had a few other comments, which I'll put up. Uh, Imogen says, how long does it take to become a skilled? I think you can be a skilled artist, you know, from day one, really. And the skill is just practicing, because the more you practice, the better you get. I have to say, I am a little bit rusty these days, because without the practice, you just d don't keep your eye in so much. So this, the thing you need to do to be a skilled artist is just practice, just doodle, just draw. And some things will turn out rubbish and you'll think, oh, no, I don't like that. <laughs> and some things will turn out really good and you'll be really proud of them. So don't give up if things don't turn out, you know, exactly perfectly because they don't all the time. Um, just keep practicing. There he is. Uh, we've had a few other We've had hi, Miss Johnson from Bradley, George, and George hi, Davis. We miss you. Miss you too. We, uh, we've got, I think you're a very talented drawer, Miss J from Imogen. Oh, thank you, Imogen. Uh, Jacob and Eva say, say hi, Miss. Hello, and Jacob. Imogen hi, says, this looks awesome. Uh, Imogen says, this looks awesome already. Can Imogen remember <laughs> doing it in year two? Imogen, can you remember doing it in year two? Let Miss Johnson know. And uh, I wondered if our resident, I did wonder if the dinosaur lover would uh, be tuning in, and it turns out he has. Look, Isaac is loving this. <laughs> All right, I'm going to write that down. And he think he uh, says it looks like Ma a Margosaurus. Saurus. Margosaurus. That's brilliant, Isaac. Thank you, because I didn't know what dinosaur I'd drawn, but you've now given him a name. Thank you. <laughs> Fantastic. And did you have some? Did you say you had some other work to share with us, Miss Johnson? Yes. Um. So I I have got my art folder out from when I was uh, at school. Well, actually, when I was at sixth form. So this was when I was about sixteen, seventeen. That kind of oh, age group. Do you want to see some of that? Yeah, we'd love to see that. Imogen says she does remember doing it in year two. Ah, yeah, it was cool. I really, I really enjoyed it, and I remember it to this day. So, but, so first of all, when you do art, you study lots of different artists, and when you see art that you like, it's always nice to have a copy and have a go. So this is a. I'm going to set you a challenge. Actually, this is a copy of a painting of a French artist. Can you find out which artist it is? 
there's there's a little quiz for you. Okay. Ooh, I, any responses to that? I wonder. Mm, any? I, I'll give you a clue. His first name starts with a P, and his surname starts with a C. So there's a little clue. Okay. So these are some of the sketches that I did for my um, uh, during my A level. I think so. This is just drawing fruit. So you've all got some fruit at home. Can you see the shape? So we've got circles, lots and lots of circles over and over again, just going round and round and round using your pencil. And then I coloured it in. Use some that's watercolour, I think, and I think that might be acrylic paints. So what else have we got here? Oh look, some wine bottles. <laughs> But they've got different fruits in them, so that was a bit, bit different. Um, what else have we got? Oh, yeah, there's another painting here that I did in the style of that artist um, in my sketchbook there. So that's the same artist as I've just shown you. So this was all inspired by that artist, like my dinosaur was inspired by Lucy Vulcan. Oh, look, that's just looking at colour. So I was looking at the different shades and tones of different colours there, just playing with paint. And the same there, looking at blues and greys. And here I was sketching some people. And you, if you look, can you see the shapes? So I've got oval shapes. I've got triangle shapes for the collar on the shirt. And maybe oblong shapes for the body and the arms. Uh, let's see what else is in there. And also... What I like to do, play with colour. So this was a picture of a window in a house, which I did in different colours and different shades. Look, a bit like um, Mrs. Webb's, uh, which which artist was it? I was trying to think which artist it was that she did with the different colours. Marilyn Monroe's. Um, and there we go. That's, um, that's on a trip to Glenthorne Beach. That's a... Um, uh, pen and ink drawing and this is a copy of um, a famous artist called William Morris who actually designed textiles so I drew it and then I painted it on that side there so um, I'll show you another one which is quite funny because um, I don't think you'll guess who this is this this was um a picture of someone. I don't know if you can imagine who that might be. <laughs> <laughs> in my younger days, I hasten to add, in my younger days. And um, this is interesting because this is all made out of fabric. So this, this is a tribute to another artist that has inspired me and my artistic journey. Anyone guess who that is? There's not a clue down in the corner. I will keep that covered up. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then later on in life, um, just before I started my teaching career, I worked at a kennels. So I put my artistic skills to good use and I started drawing pet portraits. So you can have a look at a few of these. This is one of my dogs. Um, this one is a Springer Spaniel called Tinker, who I used to have when I was um, 17 or 18. This one is a collie dog. So he's got a newspaper in his mouth. I think he's fetched it for his owner. And I don't know if any of you have got these sorts of dogs at home. This one's an Irish setter. Um, and these would have been dogs that we had at the kennels. And then this one, um, as I see, I do like working with pencil. And these are done with coloured pencils, like coloured pencils we have at school. So... It shows you what you can achieve with colour pencil. And the last one, look, there's my cocker spaniel yeah, that, um, from home. So that's a few of my bits of artwork. And honestly, it is all about practice and being inspired by other people and having a go. That's what it's all about. So I'm hoping you're going to have a go at home and see if you can do a dinosaur and keep doodling and keep... I took your microphone away then by mistake. Sorry, Miss Johnson. <laughs> Thank you so, so much for a wonderful assembly. I'm sure you've inspired lots of people to pick up their pencil and their drawing pens and to have a go at drawing their own dinosaur or anything else at home as well. So thank you very much, Miss Johnson. 
Always yes. good to see you. We had lots of people tuning in. Uh, Sophie says that an amazing dog drawing, the one that one of the ones that you shares. Thank you for that, Sophie. Um, thank you everyone for tuning in. We will be back with our next live broadcast at four o'clock this afternoon, where we're looking forward to sharing lots of examples of your work. So it'd be good to see some of your drawings where you've been inspired by uh, Miss Johnson. Mrs. Troughton's in the office and says, Amazing, Miss Johnson. <laughs> thank you so much again, Miss Johnson. We'll see you again. Okay, take care. Take care, everyone. Thank you Bye. for watching.